All right, Mr. Lawyer, yeah. make your case. Settle it and be blessed, the case, particularly when you're in the fight of your life. Well, uh, the, the case comes from Genesis 13, um, and, and really, quite briefly, I, I would encourage anybody to read uh, uh, Genesis 13 because it's really the first conflict in the Bible with one person in conflict with another, and it's Abraham in conflict with Lot. And it's Abraham, the uncle to his nephew Lot, that says, hey, look, let's not fight. Allow me to paraphrase for a second. Let's not f fight. Look, if you want to uh, look ahead, you go to the left, I'll go to the right. You go to the right, I'll go to the left. And let's resolve this conflict. And Lot, the nephew, in essence, looked out and saw the Jordan area and said, this is, the, this is where I want to go. And he goes off that way, which is close to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's another story. But it looked the best. It looked the best is, is the point. He chose, the Bible says he chose for himself. Mm. You gotta be careful when you choose for yourself. You know what I mean? So anyway, so Abraham goes off to the left in essence. And, and then that's when in the Bible, God swoops in and blesses him and his descendants forever. And that's the premise of the book. Look. And ultimately promises him the very land that Lot ex chose. Exactly. Well. Exactly. <laughs> now, you know, we've all got a, a, a before right. story. We heard a little mm. bit of Robbie's. Right. Right. Um, I, I want to read a little bit uh, of what you said here. Um, in 1984, you weren't a Christian. Correct. You say, I was living the good life, big salary, dating the prettiest women on the planet, and scouting out my first Porsche. It was L.A. law, and I was a rising star, at least in my own mind. Right, right. And uh, I, I had wonderful offices in Beverly Hills. I mean, they were really nice. And uh, to make a very long story short, it was a Wednesday night, and I would drive home from Beverly Hills to my really nice town home in Malibu and pass that little church Wednesday night, and one day I just felt called to drive in. And I parked, and a pastor just like Robbie here really did an altar call. I'm telling you, under five minutes, and uh, <laughs> I felt so driven to stand up and answer the call. That was November 1984 on a Wednesday night. And you very quickly made Jesus your senior partner. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's almost 30 years now. I'm still standing. <laughs> now you say that God gave you uh, a better plan. Let me read your own words. The Lord had given me a battle plan, a battle plan to change the mind and prepare the human soul to surrender so the Lord would fight their battle. I mean, you're, right. you're talking about right. settling but right. your job for 30 years has been litigation, has been fighting on behalf of people. How does this work? Well, in a nutshell, when you spend, if you're a Christian and you spend your life at the crossroads of human conflict, you, you have the heart to get people to resolve conflict. I mean, it's just in you. And yes, you're still at the crossroads, but you have so many opportunities to mediate and to help people. And I feel the Bible, just has so many tools to help us change our hearts. And I, I say in, the, in, in my book, I talk about the Beatitudes because you know, when you're trying to get somebody to change their heart, what, what's a tool? And one of the first tools I felt the Lord gave me was the Beatitudes. And I, and I say that it, you know, I was so excited, it turns out that the Beatitudes are a battle plan, a battle plan to turn the battle over to the Lord. The Lord. And remember, and I say it in my book, it comes from the Old Testament, the Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. So the Lord is a warrior. I mean, the Bible makes that clear. And, he, and yes, he wants us to be peacemakers, but he's on our side. Okay, so, you know, what's that balance? You have to have discernment. You have to have a lot of discernment. And, you know, and, and I say in the book, the one that sacrifices nothing for resolution learns and discerns nothing. We are called to sacrifice, and we know who the, the greatest uh, sacrifice has been is Jesus, you know, sacrificing his life. So, I should mention that in the book, most of the names, if not all, have been changed to protect you from lawsuits. Uh, uh, well, really, all, they, they've probably. been changed because, uh, you know, that's just the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've been so blessed by, you know, Harry Goldberg, for example. You've got to you tell know. the story of Harry. Now, that's not his real name. No, that's not his real but, name. But this is a real story of, right. uh, I think, first and foremost, your passion for right. the Lord and doing right. things his way. Right. But Harry was Jewish. 
Harry was Jewish, and my mentors, uh, and these are their real names, because I'm, I'm honored, uh, Max Greenberg and Herb Bernhardt, those are real names, and uh, they were my mentors, and they're Jewish, and I was so blessed that they mentored me, in, in a sense, as a, as a trial lawyer, Herb Bernhardt in particular, he's now passed away, but, but what a mentor, because they were very Jewish, and I, I mean that as such a compliment, because the Old Testament, they loved it, and I would go to all the ceremonies and everything else, and then it turns out that Harry Goldberg is Jewish and was really attacked, and, and so, you know, he would share the Psalms, and I would share, you know, Christ's message, and we bonded, and we fought this massive trial. I was in my early 30s, and I was so over my head against four of the best trial lawyers in the country. And there's little old They'd me. really lawyered up on the other They'd side. They lawyered up, and I'll tell you that. And so, whether it be the Beatitudes or the Psalms, Harry and I, every morning, were praying, and, and we and won that trial. And you called yourself a B lawyer at that time. I think I was a C-minus lawyer, oh. actually. But, but uh, You said your assistants were C. Yeah, well, they, they, you know, it was L.A. Law days, mm -hmm. and because I was a Christian, and I thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I never did drugs, I never did anything crazy like that, if you know what I mean, and so, so fortunately, I was, I was blessed, and, but yes, it was L.A. Law days, so, you know, you had people that were doing those sidebar things that were not so good. You encouraged <laughs> your client to do what you had done. Mm -hmm. What did you say to Harry? Well, it's a little problematic for him. Well, if, if yeah, I, I remember, uh, there's so, Harry and I, you know, go back over 20 years, so there are many times when, for example, I asked him to pray the Beatitudes, and, and he really wouldn't, you know. You call it Jesus' eight-step program. Jesus' eight-step program. I keep it close to me because, you know, one or two trials later, it's not like I can memorize it, but blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn. You know, everybody yeah. knows those, but... Harry didn't really want to do those, but he'd go back to the Psalms and he'd study them and the Proverbs, and then that was it. We bonded really tightly, and every morning we prayed the Psalms or the Proverbs or the Beatitudes, and that was and it. And God got him yes. through the Psalms, specifically yes. Psalm 95, verse 7. Right. Today, if you hear his voice, right. do not harden your hearts. That was right. a turning point for Harry. It was because, you know, you know Harry, you know, so I, I believe, you know, I have never heard the audible voice of God. I've been in my heart. I feel strong. Just, and, and Harry just felt he started to hear the Lord in his heart. Tell him what to do that day. Uh, what's our next step? And, and, he just, and when he read that verse, he just felt that he was hearing God. And so together we just forged ahead. That's, it's that simple. And he was, he was in the fight of his life. This was, everything was on the line. You know, Maura, it, it, it's very simple. When you're dealing with people in the fight of their life, that's when maybe they'll finally consider that Jesus' eight-step program or some of these other tools. Like They don't have all it takes to make it. Right. They can't do it anymore on their own strength. They need God's strength. They need that Mark eleven twenty two. speak to your mountain, which is your problem, and cast it into the sea in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want people to know when I'm, I'm not trying to be, be aggrandized here, but in the green room, you were telling us that you, you had to move your offices out into the boonies because people would camp out to see very well-known people coming through your doors, and those people didn't want to be identified because of, right. well, the harassment and right. also problems that they were going through. Correct. But... Mm -hmm. here, here is the beautiful, profound, uh, the first time you were in panic mode, mm -hmm. in your job, right. in the fight of your life on behalf of someone else. You said that you knelt and prayed and asked God what to do. Right. And he showed you what to do. Right. You've never changed that methodology. Well, I call it God's to-do list. And, and, and uh, I've been kneeling down for 30 years now. And... Uh, and yes, I, I, I just asked what he wants me to do that day. And uh, I felt that, you know, then and all the way up to now, he just gives me the list of things to do, which is, is kind of tough because I, I am, uh, you know, I have that personality. Well, what about this also? And let me add this and not that. But I try to stick to his list, God's to-do list. I worked for a TV station years ago and nearly got us sued by airing something that we discovered later. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we shouldn't have. And um, <laughs> I, I was a brand new believer, but right. I read Jesus' words in Matthew. You know, mm -hmm. you better settle this on your way or right. you're going to end up paying the last penny. I actually went to the general manager right. and said, um, I think we should heed this. Right. I don't, I'm not sure how God got Matthew us through that. Matthew 5, settle dead. it quickly. Jesus says, settle it quickly. I mean, if anybody is listening out there, settle matters quickly in your life, which means without delay, soon. And not hastily, which means superficially or, or fearfully, but quickly. I'm just going to mention a chapter that we don't have time to defend right now. Mm -hmm. But you say peacemakers are always seriously prepared for Correct. battle. Correct. We all need yes. to hear that. We do because um, the Bible also says that uh, it, complacency is, is a trap. And so we're not called to be simple-minded or complacent. The Bible specifically says the complacency of fools will destroy them and the waywardness of the simple will kill them. Mm -hmm. So, no, we're, we're still called to be very, very prepared, whether it's how to help your son or daughter with a drug problem or get ready for trial or you're still prepared. Think of the thing that you need to do to prepare to resolve this conflict in your life. Think what it... What, the Lord will tell you what to do. Ask him for the message, the strength, and, and the guidelines, or the to-do list. The way through. Yeah, because you have to be prepared. He's calling us to prepare and to do it abundantly. <laughs>